Hello everyone, my name is PJ and welcome back to my Let's Play of Final Fantasy 2 on the Famicom, Part 4. Few things to go over. First, if you notice the title of this episode, and yeah, you know, YouTube is getting rid of annotations. Not the annotations that are already there, but the ability to add and edit them. Which means that I'm going to have to figure out a new way to set up my outro very soon. Sometime before May. So as soon as I finish this Let's Play in its entirety, I'm probably going to take another break to experiment with new outros, try and figure out how to set them up, because I like having animated outros with, with, with video clips of my other Let's Plays. That's what my intention was from the start. I don't want to use these stupid cards that YouTube has. They're so boring, just still images. I mean, if I wanted still images, I could have done that in the first place. It's easier than making animated ones. But, whatever. Last time, we went through our first dungeon, and got all the way down to the bottom, and now we're about to fight the first boss. But first, let's have Minwu heal everyone up. Man, he's powerful. Alright, let's do this. I'll never hand over the Mithril. Sergeant. Okay. You attack. You cast fire three. Um you attack. What do you what do you have on you? Yeah. I should also mention I didn't realize this before, but if you're wielding just a shield, it doesn't matter what hand it's in, uh you won't punch. You'll actually attack with the shield. Shields in this game do have very small attack bonuses but also huge accuracy penalties. So that's why he's never been hitting. So if I wanted to actually punch with him, I'd have to take off his shields. Did you just do no damage? No, I think you are doing damage. It's just... Uh, there's not a lot of audio cues that tells you when things happen. Or, there are, but there's not enough of them, is what I mean. So let's try all that again. Um, Blizzard 3? You... Now then you need to heal yourself. Are they actually hurting him? 10 damage, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but he's not tough, especially when you got powerful magic. 200 go, Min will gain stats that he doesn't need. Alright, and we get the Mithril! Yeah, so now we can just have Min will teleport us out, but before I do that, I do remember that in the previous floor, I didn't explore it fully. So, I want to go back up and see if there's anything I missed. On the way, I'm going to talk about some other notes that I took. Let's see. I mentioned before how a lot of armor in this game imposes evasion penalties. That's not the only thing they do. Almost all of the armor in the game impose magic penalties as well. So if you're a mage, you pretty much don't want to be wearing anything. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. I've always said curious. It might be Quiras. Or, I, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's a kind of armor, but I'm just gonna say Curus for now until someone corrects me. Curuses are pretty much one of the best, like, metal armors in the game. They have high defense with very low penalties, but they don't have any special abilities. They don't make you resistant to anything, but their penalties are very low. Um, but there are special cloth armors in the game, like robes and monk sashes and stuff like that, which are pretty much the best pieces of armor in the entire game. They get really good defense, they come with resistances and stat bonuses, and have almost no penalties. That's pretty good. That's what you want. 
None of this Genji armor shit. Which I should mention, this is the game that introduced Genji armor, by the way. A lot of people associate Genji armor with Gilgamesh, assuming that Genji armor wasn't in the series until he was introduced. But no, Genji armor is in this game. That's like saying the Masamuna wasn't introduced until Sephiroth. Not true at all. It's been in the game since the first one, and it's in this one too. But I can't think of... Are there any games that don't have the Masamuna? I don't think it's an 8. Let's see. All gloves have huge magic penalties. Never wear them. Ever. Unless you happen to have a character that never casts magic. But all of our characters do. There are two elements unique to this game that I don't think any other Final Fantasy uses, called Body and Mind. Uh, spells like Stun, Blind, Silence, and Slow are body elemental. And almost every enemy in the game is resistant to body, making those spells useless. So don't cast Slow, don't cast Silence, it's not gonna do you any good. Now the other element, Mind, covers instant death attacks, but not the death spell, and death-like effects, things that can get you a game over like Petrify, Stop, or Toad. Now conversely, very few enemies in the game are resistant to Mind, so you can go ahead and use those spells. Instant death actually kind of works in this game. Is there anything over here? Nope, dead end. Anything down here? Yeah, and I have a small list of gear in the game that casts spells. There aren't any pieces of armor that cast spells, it's just weapons. Yeah, like, we can get Haste 11, Thunder 5, and Thunder 16, Holy 8, and Fog 6. Fog causes a status called Amnesia, which I think is unique to this game that basically makes you incapable of using spells and special abilities. I mean, the, the player characters don't get any special abilities, but okay, it's nothing but dead ends. But enemies do. So if they have something like... Like, like, like a special attack from Final Fantasy 1, you know, the ones like Blaze or Inferno or Ice Breath. Um, Spell-like attacks aren't spells. Yeah, if, you, if they have amnesia, they can't use them. Even though something like breath should come naturally to any living creature. You can make them forget how to breathe. Anyway. Teleport. Warps the party out of dungeons. Oh, thanks for telling me it costs HP after I've already used it. Yeah, so then we go in here and we have him heal himself. And then we'll have someone else, he'll guy. Or after we get back to town. So, we got the Mithril. We saved all the men of Salomon and Joseph's daughter, so he should definitely trust us now. I don't think he'll give us or tell us or generally do anything for us right now, though. But he'll owe us. Okay, we're back at Salomon. And boy, have I got a lot of shit to sell. Look at all this shit. I can sell this, this, this. Garlic? What does that do? I can't remember if it cures something or, like, casts a spell. It sounds like something you would use against vampires. Can I sort, can I sort my stuff? Yes, I can. Hmm. By well, the way, I'll be selling most of this stuff. Hooray! Take the Mithril to Altair and give it to the princess! Our husbands are back home safe. Thank you. Thank you so much for saving us. Hmm, I wonder how many of them say the same stuff. Okay, let's get everyone healed up, and we'll rest at the inn. I like how everyone in this town wears pink. So fashionable. Well, these guys wear kind of like a different kind of pink. It's more like a peach color different kind of peach in their skin. I don't know. I... Really? You still say the same shit? You know, I can't remember if it's ever 
outwardly stated that you're Joseph's wife, or just like a creepy stalker? Anyway, there's Nelly up there. You saved my daughter. Thank you. That cowardly Borgen had been threatening Nelly to get to me. If there's anything I can do to help, just ask. Airship? Sid is the leading expert on airships. Oh, okay, so he knows what an airship is at least. He talks to me about it, unlike those fucking slaves. The cave behind Simmered Falls used to be an old mithril mine. The deepest parts of the cave still have mithril deposits. Yep, I've been there. How do you not know what Wild Rose is? We used that keyword on you before and you reacted to it. Whatever. Thanks for saving me. Do you know anything? Nope, you're a stupid little girl, aren't you? Oh well. God, I hate how so many keyword character combinations just give you that question mark. You could have them say something, even if it's useless. Like, for Joseph, if I use Wild Rose on him again, Wild Rose on him again now, then he can just say, Go see the princess. Period. You can do that. And how does Nelly not know what Mithril is? That's what this whole fucking town is about, is the Mithril. But whatever. I am going to be walking all the way back to Altair because we didn't take the ferry and we have to walk now. All the enemies out here are weak as shit and won't cause me any issues, so I'll see you back in town. Theoretically, I could just pay Sid to fly me to Altair. But that costs like at least a hundred gold. Yo, I don't want to do that. I wonder if after I sell my stuff, I'll have enough money to buy the life tome. Because I really want it. The reason I didn't sell my stuff right away and buy the life tome is because uh, when we hand over the mithril, mithril equipment will immediately become available. And I want to make sure I can afford it. Okay, we're back in Altair. So, does anyone say anything? Will the war ever end? Yeah, and you see that Paul isn't running around anymore. Gordon, do you see anything new? Uh, ask Mithril. In Kashwan, Scott had inherited a Mithril sword that had been handed down through the ages. It was truly a magnificent blade. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, I wonder if that means that we'll find a Mithril sword when we go to Kashwan Castle. Also, it's interesting because, um, in the GBA remake, uh, there's a side story where you can play as Scott, and he starts, well, I don't know if he starts with it, but, um, in his artwork, his concept artwork, shows him with a unique rose-themed sword, and I wonder if that's the sword they're talking about. I guess it's made of Mithril. Okay. If you can find some Mithril to give to Tobol, he'll be able to make some superb weapons. The Empire has enslaved the town of Bafsk and is forcing them to build the Dreadnought. The weapons we have are no match for the Empire's. If only we had Mithril. Pine no longer. Uh, come on. Please bring Mithril back to Altair. Yeah, whatever. After Salamand? Go east to Palum and take a ship from there. You'd never make it there on foot. Fuck you, man. I walked up... I walked fucking all the way up to Salamand. On foot. To and fro. The Empire also suffered heavy losses during the battle for Finn. In Basque, they're building the Dreadnought to compensate for those losses. Learn Dreadnought. The Empire is using the people of Basque to build the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought is a massive, heavily armored airship. I already know about... I already have that word. Uh, okay. A man named Sid, former... former leader of Finn's White Knights, built an airship? I don't remember if that was ever said in the remakes. I guess it was? I don't remember that bit of info. He became obsessed with this airship and flew away from Finn. He now lives in Poft, granting travelers the passage on his airship for a fee. 
He uses this money to make further refinements to his airship. That much I do remember. The Sid in this game is absolutely obsessed with his airship. You know those like stereotypical douchebag guys that you see in like sitcoms and movies that are so obsessed with their cars that they drive them everywhere, clean them all the time, refer to them as though they were their girlfriends, stuff like that, and then they go into a homicidal rage if anyone so much as scratches it or touches it. That's what Sid is like with his airship. It's kind of creepy. Well, let's go give that myth will to Tobo. Okay, weapon shop. Let's see, items. There's Mithril. That's Mithril! I'll start making new equipment! Oh, no time to talk, there's work to be done. And then a second merchant appears both in this shop and in the other one, the armor shop. Mithril knife, Mithril staff, Mithril spear, and Mithril sword. When did I get that much money? Holy crap. Well, I got some stuff to sell. Let's see, I sell the leather armor for 50. Clothes for 10. Garlic, I don't know what this does. I don't ever remember using it. It's probably something I don't need. Fire spell. I have a shit ton of potions that I probably don't need to be carrying around. I'll hold on to three. Uh, how many antidotes should I hold on to? Three is fine. Okay. Let's buy us a Mithro sword. Alright. Now I equip that. Eleven. Twenty-three. I just more than doubled my attack power. Awesome. See, I knew it was wise not to buy the, um, the long sword. Yeah, but no one else in my party needs Mithril stuff. I think there might be another town somewhere that will sell Mithril bows for Maria. Uh, let's see what they got in the armor shop. Probably nothing that I can use. Mithril shield. Oh, better shields. Yes, I need those. Mithril helm, Mithril armor, Mithril gloves. Like I said, never wear gloves. Never wear heavy armor either. So. Three Mithro shields, my good man. Let's see. You... Equip that. Maria, where's your shield? What's your current evasion? 17%? And you do have the highest agility of the group right now. I guess you can go without a shield for a while. In fact, it seems that I've never given you a shield. Really? Huh. Uh, anyway, um... Equip guy. Mithril. Hmm, looks like I'm going to need at least one more Mithril shield. I don't know if I have the money for that. I do still want to save some money for the life tome. Let's sell the bucklers. And the broadsword. Okay. I think I have enough to afford another mithril shield. I want to be a little over 500 gil short of the amount I need for a life tome. Yeah, so let's get the mithril shields on. Sell the bucklers. Yeah. Then I just gotta get like 550 gil. I'm going up that way anyway, so I'll stop by Salomon, grind in that area for a bit, and try to buy a life tome. Other than that, um, equipment and item wise, I think I'm good. I don't think I had to do anything else in town here. Gordon's not helping. Um, what is my current mission? You told me about the Dreadnought and Basque. Wait, Snoop people here? You must destroy the Dreadnought before it's completed. I'm gonna join the Rebel Army and fight. Oh, okay. 
They say Borgans replaced the Dark Knight as commander in Basque. You haven't told me about the Dark Knight yet. Who is the Dark Knight? Blow that dreadnought to bits. I heard of the Rebel Army, so I joined. Wow, we're really growing, aren't we? Basque, Basque is controlled by the Dark Knight. He used hypnosis to manipulate the minds of the town people. He has mind control? Okay, I don't think that's ever been established in any other version of this game. Please destroy the Dreadnought. If the Empire completes the Dreadnought, then Altair, Poft, all will be lost. I can see a great evil in the skies, like roiling storm clouds. Okay, that's the most provocative thing you've said this whole game. Normally you're just a bitchy old man. The Dreadnought's construction is overseen by the Dark Knight, a competent adversary. Fortunately, he was called back to Palamecia. The theft of the Mithril has likely knocked the Empire off balance. The Dreadnought must be destroyed. I think I already asked you about that. We have a man in Basque. He's found a way to reach the Dreadnought. It must be destroyed. I have full confidence that with you and Minru on this task, it will be accomplished. Oh! Minru's gonna stay with us? I thought he only stuck with us for like one dungeon. I guess we're gonna have Minru for a bit longer. Cool. It's longer I can wait without teaching someone teleport. Unless Minru dies. Anyway, off to Basque. But first, gonna walk all the way up to Salamand. It's on the way. I could ride since airship to Basque, but fuck that. I'm gonna walk all the way to Salamand. So I'll see you there. Okay, I'm in Salamand. I did a teeny bit of gill farming just outside. Goblin guards actually dropped quite a bit of gill. So I was easily able to reach 1500 gil after selling an antidote that I picked up from a drop. So now I can afford life. I can afford life. <laughs> anyway, uh, like I said, I should probably hold on to it until it's necessary to use it. So I'm just going to put my life tome down here. I rearranged my inventory too off screen. Wait, new items that I buy get automatically added to the top of my items list? That is so annoying. Oh god, let me rearrange this. There. Now new stuff that I get uh, will go on the top and won't rearrange anything. <laughs> but now I'm broke as shit. That'll probably change. It's fine though, I bought pretty much everything that I want at this point. So, now it's off to Basque. In order to get to Basque, you basically just head east from Poft or Salamand. Now when you can't head any further east, head south. There it is. See that enormous airship? The one that's like the size of a castle? That's the Dreadnought. And this is the town of Basque. Gotta say it slowly. <sighs> okay, save up. Here we go. The town of Basque itself is relatively safe. You'll need a pass to board the Dreadnought. Where do we get a pass? You're with the Rebels? You've got to destroy the Dreadnought. There's a Rebel spy masquerading as an Imperial soldier. Go talk to him. Now, I didn't show it off, but if you come to Basque early, you can actually meet the Dark Knight. He'll be standing in this spot, ordering everyone else around. Can I talk to you guys without getting killed? Is the Dark Knight ever going to return? Get back to work. No one wants to work under General Borgen. Yes. 
So basically what everyone's implying, what they will imply, that rather, um, if I can find an NPC or two that says it, basically everyone admits that working under the Dark Knight wasn't nearly as bad as working under Borgen. Like, they actually enjoyed being bossed around by the Dark Knight. But that's put in a lot of different contexts when you take into consideration the implied idea that the Dark Knight was mind-controlling them. Which I don't think is ever said in any other game. That's new to me. That Borgen is a buffoon. See, even the Imperial soldiers don't like Borgen. Um, are any of these shops open? They are. You just sell bronze stuff. What about weapons? I highly doubt that you would sell the Mithril bow that I want. No, you just sell normal shit. Because you can come here early, so... Well, let's talk to Borgen and see what he says. Work! The sooner we finish, the greater my glory! Yeah, so this is the former Count Borgen. The guy who betrayed all of Finn and let the Empire take it over. He's basically the reason that all of our main character's parents are dead. And that we're in all of this. So, Borgen's a bit more important than people give him credit for. Even though he's a weak, selfish coward. But you can't really ask him anything. He doesn't even know about the fucking Dreadnought, which is what they're working on. Oh well, can I at least rest at the inn? I forgot to do so at the last town. Tengil. Awesome. General Borgen needs to be more firm with these peasants. What do they have at the magic shop? Fear, Bazuna, Izuna, and Silence. Well, I'm gonna want Izuna, but I can't afford it. Not right now. I'll have to grab it soon. Maybe after this next dungeon. We can goof off more with Lazy Borgen in charge. Oops. Um, you didn't hear that. Uh... So you want to destroy the Dreadnought. I'm on your side. There's an entrance to the sewers up ahead. It leads to the Dreadnought. Good luck. You're one of us. I had to keep my cover while the Dark Knight was commander. And then he goes away. Revealing this secret unwalled staircase that anyone could have walked around to if it weren't for the weird world map mechanics. Whatever. Second dungeon. This song that you hear? This incredibly repetitive song. This is the theme of the Imperial Army. The antithesis to the Rebel Army theme. And we get our first heaping helping of undead. So, the thing about undead is, unlike in the first game where you couldn't target enemies with healing spells, in this game you can, and I'm pretty sure it hurts them. But I don't want to waste magic on these things until I test to see how strong they are. So, let's just attack the ones in the front row. And see how we fare. Virion one-shots them. As does Minwoo. Okay, they're not a big threat. Just remember you can't flee from undead, no matter how weak they are. It's just like a rule. I don't know if it's a bug or a lore thing. But just remember it. Look at that, 55 gil from those guys. How did we get 55 gil if there's four of them? 55 isn't divisible by four. Maybe it's a random amount per zombie, or maybe it's a set amount for the troop. I don't know. But either way, we'll be able to afford the Azuna Tome in no time. So let's see. Uh, okay, chest here. Soldier and a couple balloons. No problem. Oh, forgot to grab the chest. Really? 
Longsword, I have already got something better than that. Oh well, I can sell it. I guess they give it to you just in case you're unable to afford the Mithro Sword when it becomes available. Now, that is pretty cool, how the soldiers are colored. Their weapons and their shields are blue. The same shade of blue as Firion's Mithro Sword. So they actually are equipped with Mithro stuff. Okay, moving on. Uh, west or south? I'm gonna try west first. Dead end. Okay, back the way we came. And this time we'll go south. Okay. That's a dead end over there. Chest? Is it trapped? It's awfully suspicious. Either that or it's something they want me to have. Okay. Longbow. Um, is that the same thing she has right now? No, she has a regular bow. Cool. Well, she got an upgrade. It's not a mithril bow, but it's something. Cool. Okay. And there's the entrance to the next floor. Uh, let's see, I'm almost out of time, but I did spend a long time farming for money, so I can go a bit over it. Let's go west first. Nope, dead end. Okay. What about this way? That was a dead end, I made a good guess. Okay. Mazes on their own. Namely, featureless mazes like this one. Aren't a good element of game design at all. Because what, what does the player do if he comes to a fork in the road and both directions look completely identical? He guesses. That's not an interesting choice. I mean... If one of the paths was filled with water, and different enemies appeared in the water, and the other path didn't, then I would have to gauge which direction I wanted to go. Okay, continuing forward. The encounter rate in this game is really high. And it and I don't think it would be until Final Fantasy VIII where players were given control over the encounter rate. I cannot remember for the life of me if there's a materia in Final Fantasy VII that affects the encounter rate. Oh, oh there's the Dark Knight. He wasn't called back to the Empire at all. He's right here waiting for us. You fools thought I'd return to Palamecia before the Dreadnought was finished? Surrender before it's too late. Consider my words. We will meet again. And then Borgen shows up from the right somehow. Ha! Serves you right! And then they both run off, and we step outside just in time to see them fly away in the completed Dreadnought. Oh well, so much for our mission, but, but, this part sucks so bad. See, since it forced you to step outside, casting the teleport spell won't work now. It will just take us out to that little patch that we can't walk away from. But, now we go the direction that Borgen came from, to that door. And if you don't do this, you might be stuck for the whole game until you look up a walkthrough that tells you you're supposed to go into this room. Yep, so you come over to this room. This is like the, uh, Imperial break room, I guess. Received pass. Remember that NPC said you need a pass to board the Dreadnought? Well, now we have it, so now we just gotta find the Dreadnought. And over here is a wonderful 
teleportation circle. That will take us right outside. I, I guess the teleportation circle is how Borgen got to that room from outside. But it's only two-way trips for villains. For PCs, it's only a one-way trip. I don't know how they do it. But that is all the time I have for this video, so I'm going to save up. I'm probably going to do all of my grinding in this general area, maybe down in the sewers where I just came from. Yeah, because I think they're a higher rank, because I was getting a lot of stat bonuses for fighting them, even with little to no effort. So, I almost have enough to buy the Azuna Tome. And by the time the next video is up, which will be Monday, I'll probably have it already. And I'll probably level it up a bit too, because the way Azuna works, uh, it doesn't start off with the ability to cure all status ailments. You have to level it up first. And every level it gains adds more to the list of things it can remove. So, thank you all so very much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. I'm just starting out and every like means a lot to me. And if you want to be notified when I upload more videos, subscribe and you will. And if you want to support me on Patreon, you can. There'll be a link in the annotations at the end of the video and in the description below. So, I'll see you all in the next video. Werebuster and Moonsword. What the fuck? What? The floor turned into a door. I'm out of here. This place is freaking me out.